Do you ever wake up in the morning and just get the desire to get out of bed, head on outside, take a deep breath of fresh air, and slaughter beautiful, innocent living things? Well, even if you don't, you will after just a short while playing this game. Because we all know that video games don't cause violence, but they encourage it. And since violence is the name of the game, that is why today I must pitch to you the most beautiful combination of graphic, violent, senseless killing and graphic, violent, sensible killing in a game that takes genocide to the great outdoors. Now, we all know that video games have a great legacy of offering you the opportunity to kill lots of bad guys, or in some cases to even kill lots of good guys. But now we're going to explore uncharted terrain with the novel idea of a game that offers you the opportunity to kill defenseless animals. Let's face it, everyone hates nature. It's big, it's loud, it's dirty. It's essentially like a giant city, only with no television, and no bathrooms, and with no people, and with wild animals running all over the place, and with no buildings, and with wild plants. Really, when you think about it, it's not like a city at all. But even so, I propose a video game which offers its players the opportunity to strike back at nature in a simulated environment, the goal of which is to end the endangered species problem by killing them. Now, that isn't to say that this would just be a senseless rampage of violence. No, of course not. It would be a game with a very intricate plot, or at least with a plot, or something that slightly resembles a plot. The idea being, the premise being, that a panda, or maybe a gang of pandas, have killed your parents. How? I don't know. It's not important. But in order to not let this stand and not let pandas mess with you and your family, you, the player, you, the main character, have to take revenge by killing pretty much all of the endangered species that you could find. That might sound like overkill, but it probably would seem like a good idea at the time to someone who's in that sort of mindset. Now, what do I propose to call this game? I call it Pandemonium! Because when you look at it, Pandemonium is a word meaning place of many demons. And panda is a word meaning panda. So when you put them together, you get a word meaning kick-ass awesome. Also, is it just me or did that panda look a bit like Che Guevara? Pandemonium! Kill animals while fighting South American communism! In any case, the premise is pretty simple. Essentially, what you need to do is go on various missions, or as I prefer to call them, sprees, to kill various endangered species until that species becomes extinct. Now, they would be grouped, of course, by levels, characterized by the environment in which they occur. So there would be an Afri African savanna level, there would be a Brazilian rainforest level, there would be an ocean level, you see what I'm getting at. And in these levels, there are various different species, a certain number of which you need to make extinct as well as bonus species, which you can score points for that lead to various bonuses later on in the game. But, you ask, how do you go about killing said animals? Why, with weapons, of course. Nuclear weapons! Now, you would have to acquire different weapons as the game progresses, and different weapons are necessary during different stages, but it would essentially amount to starting with one basic weapon, say, for example, a standard shotgun rifle cannon. Don't ask me what that is and needing to purchase weapons as the game progresses. The money for which you get from trading animal products, say for example, leopard skin or ivory, on the black market. Now, different weapons would be necessary for different environments and killing different animals. For example, in the ocean, on the ocean level, when you need to kill the blue whale, you need a harpoon. A nuclear harpoon! Now, now, you might say, doesn't that sound a bit like Moby Dick? I say that sounds exactly like Moby Dick, only without any of the literary value and with an extra helping of awesome. But of course, every level is going to have certain specialized weapons that you need for it. For another example, there's an open air stage in which you have to shoot down bald eagles and California condors with a machine gun. A nuclear machine gun! But it gets even better. 
If you can save up enough money and bonus points, you can buy special bonus weapons that completely change the face of each level. For example, on the African savanna, you can use a tank to blow away elephants and giraffes from a distance. And, of course, in the open air level, you can get a World War II German fighter plane. Why a World War II German fighter plane? Well, who wouldn't want to shoot down bald eagles and California condors in a World War II German fighter plane? In fact, if you don't, you must be gay. But of course, the direct attack strategy isn't always the most efficient. That is why in these games you can also choose more coy methods of causing animals to become extinct. For example, setting forest fires, nuclear forest fires, or logging. Yes, logging. Yes, it's possible for an individual person to log an entire forest if you're very dedicated. Very dedicated. I'm sure that by now you've considered that there's at least one apparent fatal flaw in this game. That is, while you do have all of these wonderful methods of killing animals, it raises the question of what the challenge is. That is, why should this be a difficult enough task for it to make for a satisfying gaming experience? That being said, remember, killing off endangered species is not all fun in games. Elephants charge, snakes bite, bears have claws, and birds shit on your head. And not only do they shit on your head, but if you get enough of them together, they could gang up on you and claw your eyes out like they did in that movie directed by Alfred Hitchcock. In addition to that, there are various human opponents who are trying to kill you and who you have to both evade and kill as well. Now, you don't get points for it, but it's necessary for your survival, and it's a lot of fun. These could include Federal Rangers, members of Greenpeace, or PETA activists. It could even include the World Wildlife Fund, who are angry with you for copyright infringement. Yeah, there's no resemblance right there. And of course, there are environmental obstacles. I mean, think about it. Have you ever been out in the wilderness? Well, if you haven't, remember, there's probably a reason why. Did I mention that there are certain bonus levels where, if you acquire enough points, you can attack endangered species from different time periods? Yeah, how does that work? I don't know. Eventually, you get to the final level. Where? Tibet. Who do you have to kill? Tibetan monks. Well, okay, you don't really have to kill Tibetan monks to score points, but they're kind of in the way and you need to kill them in order to get to your real adversary. Who is your real adversary? Big Papa Panda. That's right, the panda who single-handedly killed your parents, who murdered and ate them. What's that? Pandas don't eat people? This one does. After you've taken out his army of pandas, you need to fight him one-on-one. -on -one. How? With what kind of glorious weapon? Oh no, this is too personal for those kinds of weapons. You need to fight him in hand-to-hand -hand combat. NUCLEAR HAND-TO-HAND -hand COMBAT! Pandemonium. It's a massacre with a capital, oh yeah. I'm Tad Jemine and I approve this message.